Hello everyone, I'm Grace. Welcome to my channel, The Blooming Notice in Paramita. First, let me introduce my new friend. He's just behind me, Mountain Turnal. And you're right, I'm currently in Banff. And you are very welcome to my lovely balcony. Today, let's talk about a new topic, being under Buddha's guidance forever. In the ten vows of Buddhasava Samanapatra, he said, O oh, noble minded man, what meant by under Buddha's guidance forever? It means, for instance, the Tathagata Bayokana of Sahawald, who from the beginning, when he made up his mind to become a Buddha in order to deliver all beings and having made exquisite other ones by unremittingly skillful accession and sacrifice his life and the bodies in unutterable and countless number for the sake of almsgiving. He striped off his own blood. He striped off his own skin for the parchment. He used his own blood as ink and his bones for writing instruments. That scripture has been written could be as great as a mountain soon. In appreciation for Buddhism Dharma, he would disregard the royal throne, palace, gardens, and family, and all that appertained to him. He spared no energy in his human life career, as pain taking until he, he attained the enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. Then he displayed a various exalted powers, manifested various transmutations, revealed various Buddha figures, and presided the various assemblies, such as the assemblies of Buddha Sava, assemblies of Savakas, and the Pakayeta Buddhas, and the assemblies of Sangha, Kshetriya. Brahmish elders and the laymen. The assemblies of divas, nagas, eight groups, mankind and subhuman. At those assemblies and sectaries, he spoke in a full and wrong voice of thunder with expedient means of skillful methods, teaching the beings in a manner befitting their inclinations to find happiness thus he led them to maturity to the body until he entered into nirvana and he says all those examples i would follow not only the present world all in one but all the tathagatas of buddha countries and in equal numbers of dust mode of 10 directions and three periods so our Dharma realms and, and cosmic world, I will follow all those examples of Buddha from space has ended and the sorrow of beings have ended. My practice of the following examples of Buddhas will not ended. Thoughts succeed thoughts without interruption and in bodily, vocally and mentally deeds without variousness. There are words in sutras that I would like to explain a little bit. The first is Saha world. Why we call our world Saha world? Saha is actually from Sanskrit, translated as tolerable, which means that the world is suffering and all signed beings can, can bear all the sufferings and go with it all the time. That's the reason Buddha called this world Saha world. And why Buddha said our world is suffering? Because the happiness in this world actually could be the cause of the suffering. There is no real happiness or external happiness in our world. Take um, an example, like everyone wants to be healthy, want to be super rich. But before we make money, we have to worry about how can I get some money legally and not spend that much time 
when we get some money we start to think about how can I keep this money how can I make more money and we have to worry about if someone like friends or, or family come to you ask you to borrow some money from you and you are also very afraid to lose it the every single moment of this procedure is kind of suffering and when we about to die we still have some attachment to the money we want to go some other world with those money which is drag us into the reconditions so because of this attachment to the four tombs we could not reborn to the Amitabha blessing world we have to stay in this Saha world to experience more suffering and recognitions. The second thing I need to explain about is offer someone's body. You may be curious, how can I offer my body? I need to breathe, I need to feed myself, right? If I offer my body to someone, how can I survive? How can I continue my Buddhism cultivations? About offering one's body, actually we have a beautiful story about Buddha Shadyamuni. According to sutras, many many lives ago, Buddha Shadyamuni made up his mind to become a Buddha and attain the enlightenment. He was named Shanghui Boy, who was uh, walking on the street when he saw Dipankara Buddha. And the boy found that there are some mud on the ground. He was worried about if Buddha walk into those mud, then the sludge will, will stain Buddha's feet. So he was wondering, I should do something now. So he lay down, put his long hair into those mud to cover the mud very well and uh, plead the Buddha to walk through the mud by stabbing his hair. At that moment, the Buddha saw the sincere and the heart of Shanghui boy, and he said, Good man, you will be a Buddha in your next life, and your name will be the Shadyamuni. Now we know the reason why our Buddha named Buddha Shadyamuni. But more importantly, we have to know that Buddha Shadyamuni does offer his body not only in this life, his offering is immeasurable, which is one of the reasons that he can attain the enlightenment. Time to time, I just cannot help to think about how lucky we could be and appreciate for it. In this evil world of five turbulence, we can still have faith on Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. We still so honored have a master who came for us to guide us, never give us up, never leave us. So by all means, we have to strain our heart and make up our mind to attain the Buddhahood, to attain the enlightenment as soon as possible. Every day we say that may this merit from my practice adorn Buddha's pure land. But have you ever think about whose or which Buddha land we are decorating? A kindly reciting Buddha's name, even a tiny offer as a penny, are actually pure and adorn our pure land, our Buddha land in the future. Not for Buddha Shadyamuni, not for other Buddhas. Think about that. Everyone is going to be a Buddha someday. If we are not going to do some good deeds in our words, in our behaviors today, do not make any good causes, do not make any merits and virtue. When we become a Buddha, who will come to protect us, who will be our Buddha Sabas, then who will become our Arahats? Who are delivering all the beings to the Paramita with us? Well, this is our Dharma talk today. Thank you so much for your listening. To become a Buddha, to attain enlightenment, is a long but glorious path to walk. And it's also the 
owning that every being have to pass it. Being under Buddha's guidance forever is the practice and our wise choice. I hope everyone will become Buddha soon. Thank you very much for your listening. I'm Grace. If you like my channel or like videos, please subscribe it and give me great comments. And if you have any questions, please contact me in my YouTube links. I'm always down to make connection and answer any questions from you. I see you next week in Ban. Bye.